I won't be happy until we get our first win here and, and multiple wins after that. It's really difficult to get a win in a Trans Am race. That's why it's so satisfying when you finally get one. I'm ready for one now. You know, the thing about uh, running in Trans Am is, you know, this is a pro series. It's put up or shut up. All right, check a flag so we can go ahead and put it on the ground and get ready to go. I'll do like five flyers, maybe six. That's like, you know, that's like 25, 30 minutes. And then I'll, I'll, I'll stay hot on my final lap, pull into the pit so we get a good reading. And then we'll do tire pressures there and then that'll be it. I don't want to wear the car out. I don't want to pound around and do lap after lap after lap in a practice session that doesn't count for anything. But I do want to get sharp. Every weekend, you know, we, we get better and better with the with the Audi. I find its limitations, its capabilities. I'm finding that more and more now. We've actually been adjusting the car to tweak it and make it better and faster. We may have to put some wing in this thing, put it back. We flattened it at mid-Ohio. So we're fed. So it, it goes Kesman, Bowden, Pierce. Oh, Pierce went around you then, okay. 16-8. 16.9, Kind of a thinker on, on where I need to be when. Um, and, you know, not panic too much. Sometimes it's hard not to panic. You know, even this morning, for example, we weren't very fast. The car was super loose. And, you know, we were fifth or sixth or something. You know, we were not fast. And, you know, it's like, okay, let's, let's be analytical about this. We have a, a mid-heavy fuel load. Our tires are all used up. We know that. Um, and on, to add, on top of that, we, we were super loose. We had taken the wing out after we had left this track two months ago and, and, and ran a flatter wing at Indy and Mid-Ohio and, and those places. We come here and now the car is loose in high speed corners. So, you know, in high speed here, man, it's like 130 to 40 miles an hour. You can't have a car stepping out on you at those speeds. It's no wonder we were slow. So, okay, add all that up. How are we gonna fix it? All right, let's go out to the next session and, and we're gonna be in like qualifying mode. Let's run a, a lighter fuel load. Let's put on a different set of tires, uh, ones that we can run two practice sessions on. They have, half more life than the, the, the rags we just took off. So that wing change made a big difference. And that settled the car right down and, and we were able to, to get in the, uh, into the 215s, which was a second and a half faster than we ran this morning. So that puts us uh, third overall, which is right where we want to be. This is right where we want to be on the second practice session of the day. Because this next time out, it's around the time that we're going to qualify tomorrow. So it's a kind of a qualifying simulation.
last session was the first practice, official practice, and it's timed and everybody's paying attention now. And, you know, we went out, um, got warmed up, got a flyer going, and uh, somebody oiled down the track right away. So we all had to come in. Fixed all that, they put oil dry down, and, and everybody took off again. And so I, I waited for everybody to go, because that meant they, they'll sweep up that oil dry once they, you know, 20 cars go through it. And, uh, you know, I, I did a warm up and I knew there was only five minutes left in the session. I'd only get one shot at it. So I came by, did one warm up, came by, put my head down, went as hard as I could, ran a, a 214.9, which is uh, 2.1 seconds faster than I've ever gone here uh, since the last time I was here. So we improved by 2.1 seconds. That's pretty cool. All right, well done, guys. Thank you. That was, that was awesome. You know, it's uh, Friday here, it's qualifying day. We have a practice session in the morning and, and then our qualifying uh, late in the afternoon. And the thing is, is uh, you're looking for time. You're looking for where can I make up tenths of a second on this track? It's a four mile track, so with 14 turns. If you make up a tenth of a second in every turn, that's one and a half seconds, that's a lot. So there's a lot of time that can be made up on this track and one of them is at the kink and that's the famous kink here at road america it's for us it's a uh, a fifth gear turn you know you're doing 130 mile an hour plus i'm afraid to look um, but it, it is the make it or break it corner when it comes to speed if you break going into that corner um you're probably going to lose a second easy the question is is are, are you going to lift and how much are you going to lift and how much you're gonna keep your foot down. That's the difference of a second to a second and a half in your qualifying time. You know, it's what we lay awake at night running this course in our head on, okay, here's my game plan for qualifying, and this is what I need to do in order to try and qualify for pole. All cars are on course, session is underway. Showed up to fourteen eight oh seven. You're P two. I heard a crackling over here, and I said, "What was that lap?" And you said it didn't show up one. And then I heard on. It was, I was on the going to Canada corner, and I heard the fourteen. I went, "Oh, cool." In qualifying, they split the sessions. The TA cars go out before us and they have uh, 15 minutes for, to put in their qualifying times and then, then they run us. So if you do the math, I mean, I think there's enough time to do like four flyers and that's it. This is a four mile track. Uh, a lap time is two minutes and 13 seconds if, if you're lucky. So if you do the math, the warm up lap, the cool off lap, you literally have three to four flyers that, that you have to get your qualifying time in. The first flyer is not going to be fast. You're not up to temperature. Your tires aren't up to, to temp, let alone air pressures yet. So the, 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 the real good lap is, is the third lap around here. And so everything's got to fall into place. It's 
secret to a fast lap, especially in the Audi, is brake pressure. You know, the, and you can see the difference between amateurs and pros in the amount of brake pressure that's registered uh, in the data. Uh, you know, an amateur is, is putting down 800 foot pounds of brake pedal pressure. A pro, 1,500 pounds. And um, you literally have to stand on the brake pedal as hard as you can. I, 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 I was started cramping my leg up uh, on that qualifying lap. I hit it so hard. So uh, I guess maybe I'll have to work out my calf muscles. But uh, you know, we got 1,300 foot-pounds brake pressure uh, going into Canada Corner. That's how hard you got into the brake to get this thing slowed down in order to make the right-hand corner. Five nine three, half second off. Yes, great job. Qualified second. We're on the front row for the third uh, race in a row. So still haven't got pole, but uh, we're, we're at least we're hanging in there. You got to be sniffing around that podium, sniffing around that pole in order to, to to get it. You know, at least we're in the hunt. Well, feels good to get that 13 monkey off my back. Yeah, right. Now we got to get get to the 12s. I just wait all weekend for new tires. <laughs> It's like, oh man, feel this, this is so good. For about three laps, yeah, and then it's like, hey, what happened? Yeah. Hey. The difference between used tires and new tires is, you know, that first heat cycle that you, you put the new tire through, it, it, it warms up and, and gets to its optimal operating temperature and tire pressure. The tire pressure grows and heats up. And the grip level is just really good. You can you feel confident behind the wheel, you um, can really get on the throttle hard and exit corners hard. Uh, there's no sliding, there's none of that. And, and you can feel it. You know there's a good time in the car when you feel that. It's a pretty cool feeling. And it's, a, it's cool that we're, you know, we're progressing, getting faster, more confident, getting the car dialed in. We're, we're now getting to the point where we're adjusting the car uh, to make it better. So yeah, it's working out pretty good. It's race day here at uh, Road America. I'll admit, you know, this whole weekend's been kind of stressful. It's been fun, but it's like we have another Audi in the mix and he's faster than me. So, you know, that pisses me off. I want to go, I want to be the fastest car, period. It's a rolling start. It's probably going to be in third gear, uh, maybe even second gear. And, uh, you know, you're going to be going so much slower than you normally go in, pre in practice or in qualifying or at race speed. So. You know, how deep do you go? What's your speed going to be? You know, um, is the guy behind you going to stuff it in there? It, there's all these variables that you you have to process and, and have a, a plan in place. If this happens, do this. If this happens, do that. You know, uh, if, you, if you haven't thought about that, you're going to get surprised and be caught off guard. Now, you're always worried about turn one and all that. Um, Kesman and I went side by side through there. He gave me room. Uh, we went down in the, in the turn three there, leading onto the back straight. And uh, you know, then we were able to go single file through there. Um, I was able to hold off the Viper. He had so much power down the straightaway compared to us. But we were in second. You know, at the start of the race, just kind of settling in. Then he came by me on the back straight before I can't, there's no way I could block him. He got by me in the five, he just flew past me. So he came by me and it's all I could do, I just hung on. I could see he was all over the road, you know, he's dumping wheels off here. He was, he was running 10 tenths, 11 tenths the whole time. I thought, well, it'll be a matter of time before, you know, he's gonna make a mistake and I'll be able to get by him. 15-6, less than a second behind that close. Now running speeds that don't leave a whole lot of margin for a period. Um, if you miss a bracing, breaking point, you're going to go off the track. So the concentration level is so key in these races. You have to hit your marks every single lap. You have to brake at the same place time and time again, or move your braking mark up time and time again, just so 
that you're getting quicker but not you know, being too aggressive and missing your marks and, and going off the track and throwing the race away. Halfway through the race, I got TA cars coming through us. We're racing hard and you're trying to be nice to let them, the leaders through, you know, you don't want to screw their race up. And I lose time to him. He gaps me and I even had a TA car come by me and you know, he about spins in front of me. So I got to stop the car. So we lost, you know, another four seconds to the Viper. Four has totally screwed me up. Keep driving, keep driving. I was able to put my head down. There was enough time left in the race to run down the Viper. Um, I got by him going into the kink which was great because he's so fast down the straightaways that it gave me enough room and enough time to put a gap on him so he couldn't get by me. You know, I went three races in four weekends. That's that's a lot of racing. I'm ready to take a break. Um, two, uh, I've had three second place uh, front row starts. I've had three second place finishes all in a row. So I'm ready for that first place trophy. It's good to be in Trans Am. It's good to represent Audi, you know, for the first time. Obviously, I, we hope we put on a good show for you guys, but I got to stop collecting these second place trophies. Come on, Tim.